Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to be part of this great online community. My name is Georges Valogianis, and I'm currently a postdoc at Harvard in the physics department, working in particular in Corad Vorkin's group, who has been my close collaborator in this line of work that I'm going to be discussing today, which is entitled, as you may see here, Going Beyond the Galaxy Power Spectrum and Analysis of Both Data with Wavelet Scattering Transforms, which actually coincides with the title of our most recent paper that we put out on the archive about a month ago. So let's start with a brief introduction to this topic. So uh, we're all cosmologists and we are very excited uh, because we find ourselves in a time in which a large collection of current and upcoming cosmological surveys are going to very precisely map out the three-dimensional distribution of galaxies in the large scale structure of the universe, which in turn can potentially allow us to infer the true nature of, uh, for example, the dark energy, dark matter, massive neutrinos, or the properties of gravity at large scales. This is all great. Uh, however, given this expected unprecedented increase in the amount of incoming data, one cannot help but wonder about how to optimally characterize or uh, and also extract all of this information that is encoded in the three-dimensional uh, cosmic web. And perhaps the first step in this quest is so to say, for an ideal estimator would be to uh, extract the two point correlation function or equivalently the, the Fourier space counterpart, the galaxy power spectrum, which has indeed served as the main object of interest in traditional applications of cosmological parameter inference and uh, has seen tremendous progress on efforts to model it in the past decade or so. So this is all great. However, unfortunately, we know that the power spectrum is incomplete because of the fact that uh, the distribution, the probability distribution of the large scale structure of the universe is highly non-Gaussian uh, at late times because of the action of the nonlinear gravitational instability, uh, which uh, has, is the main driver of structure formation in the, uh, in the universe and uh, is also responsible for seeding non-Gaussian information uh, in the distribution of the large scale structure of the universe. In order now to overcome this shortcoming, if so to say, the next step, uh, straightforward step, according to this reasoning, would be, of course, to extend our evaluations such that they include uh, higher order correlation, correlation functions and then incorporate them into traditional applications of cosmological parameter inference. And even though such a plan is great and in principle sounds very reasonable, in practice, it quickly becomes very infeasible because of the fact that both the associated computational cost of evaluation but also the dimensionality of the resulting data vector very quickly blow up with increasing order of the target correlation function one wants to evaluate. Now, on the other hand, in the past decade or so, uh, a new and novel estimator, convolutional neural networks, have emerged as a new promising tool that uh, claims to be able to potentially characterize all of the information that is encoded in an input physical field, no matter how complicated. And uh, however, even though uh, uh, they've shown tremendous, tremendous promise in the context of applications involving cosmological simulations, the extent to which this level of performance can actually be realized and claimed in applications involving actual uh, galaxy data obtained by cosmological surveys is still an open question because of many issues related to their interpretability, because essentially convolutional neural networks can be seen as a giant black box. Now, the estimator that I'm going to be focusing on today is one that promises to combine the strengths of both of these approaches and essentially serve as an ideal middle ground between the two, which is the wavelet scattering transform, which is an estimator that was proposed about 10 years ago, uh, first in the context of uh, computer vision and signal processing. Now, what is the wavelet scattering transform? Let's define it. Uh, so given an, an input a physical field, which can be any arbitrary field, but in our case, because we will uh, focus on cosmological applications, it will essentially be a three-dimensional cosmological density field. Uh, 
This WST procedure starts by applying a series of, of convolutions uh, uh, to this field by a family of localized wavelets. Now, these, these wavelets can be generated starting by a given uh, mother wavelet, which is uh, uh, which can be seen qualitatively as a Gaussian uh, wavelet uh, that probes, for example, a given physical scale and orientation, but it has a precise mathematical definition. So uh, the family of wavelets can be generated by performing two series of simple uh, transformations to this wavelet, Di a series of dilations to its uh, fundamental physical scale, which in our case will be dyadic by powers of two, and also a series of rotations to its fundamental orientation. After performing this convolution, one takes the modulus of the resulting field and finally averages over all of its pixels, uh, which returns a an, an final uh, real number that we call a WST coefficient. And uh, this procedure is very nicely illustrated on this figure here on the right, where you may see that by given a, an input three-dimensional field, this uh, series of convolutions with the, uh, the family, the members of the family of wavelets generates many different uh, versions of this original field, which after taking the modulus and average, generate a collection of WST coefficients uh, up to the first order. And more importantly, uh, after successively reapplying this procedure on each one of those uh, resulting fields, generates a tree-like architecture that we call a scattering network, which gives us a collection of WST coefficients after averaging after its layer of evaluation. And you may be like, okay, this is fine, this makes sense, but uh, why do this? Like, or what's the whole point? Or as a physicist, I would ask, what is the physical meaning of these WST coefficients? So at zeroth order, of course, we this is just the mean value of our field, which is not particularly informative. Uh, or in cosmology, I would say it's not informative at all. But things get progressively more and more interesting as we increase the order of evaluation. So at first order of this, procedure. One might notice that uh, the convolution with a given wavelet that probes a, a physical scale and orientation, uh, and uh, especially the extracted WST coefficient out of this, essentially encodes information about the strength of clustering around this given scale and orientation, which is something that reminds us of our familiar two-point correlation function or the power spectrum. And in fact, some of you might have already noticed that if we replace this localized wavelet by a plane wave perturbation, and if we raise the modulus of this field to the power of two, we essentially recover the power spectrum version of these WST coefficients. So you might see how things get interesting for cosmology because essentially these coefficients encode information about the clustering. Now, things get even more interesting if we move on to the second order of evaluation where, and according to this reasoning I just uh, laid out, uh, the extracted WST coefficients will essentially encode information about the clustering of clustered structures, which is essentially information relevant to the correlation function of order two to the power of two. So the four point correlation function. So essentially you see that after doing this twice only, we can immediately start accessing information beyond the two point correlation function. So non Gaussian information. And in ter it turns out that this basis of WST coefficients, uh, it has been proven by mathematicians, can uh, act as a basis that reflects the clustering properties of an input physical field. Just like in cosmology, we traditionally construct a basis consisting of the power spectrum, the bispectrum, the trispectrum, and so on and so forth. And it turns out also that this basis has been proven to retain all the nice properties of our familiar power spectrum, plus additional ones not realized by the power spectrum, such as compactness, stability. I don't have enough time to get into all of this. But more importantly, uh, you might, those of you that have been working with machine learning might have already noticed that this architecture here, this scattering network, essentially reminds us of a, of a neural network with fixed kernels that in our case are these uh, localized wavelets. So essentially one can construct a, an interpretable version of a CNN with something very attractive for physicists. And indeed, in our previous paper, uh, collaboration with uh, Corrad Dvorkin, 
uh, in which we applied this WST with a uh, three-dimensional simulated uh, dark matter fields by the Quixote simulations, uh, we found that uh, indeed this base of WST coefficients can uh, not only match but perform much better than the than traditional estimators uh, when it comes to the one sigma errors obtained on cosmological parameters through a Fisher forecasting. And uh, this was all great, and uh, it's very exciting and very promising about uh, the WST applications on cosmology. But if this level of performance, once again, is to be uh, replicated uh, in applications involving actual galaxy data, we need to do better than that. Uh, because of the fact that realistic uh, cosmological surveys observe galaxies that do not perfectly trace this underlying dark matter density field, that we previously worked with, but are, as we say, biased tracers of it, which are also in the case of spectroscopic surveys, such as DESI, observed in redshift space, which introduces an observed anisotropy to the clustering pattern, the redshift space distortions. And on top of that, one has to deal with additional layers of systematics of a given data set, such as non-trivial survey geometry and other shortcomings. So all of these need to be accounted for. And this was the main objective of our most recent paper with Cora Dvorkin, in which we performed the very first application of the wavelet scattering transform uh, using as an input the galaxy density field obtained by actual observations, in particular observations obtained by the BOSS collaboration, the BOSS CMAS DR12 sample. And uh, to be more specific, our main objective was to identify the extent to which uh, the WST, this vector of WST coefficients, can enable a likelihood analysis, which traditionally uh, allow us to determine a vector of cosmological parameters of interest given a particular data set, which again in our case was the BOST data set. And uh, our, so our main estimator was this collection of WST coefficients up to second order uh, using four scales and four orientations, so 76 of those. And at the same time, we also compared its performance against uh, the standard multiples of the galaxy power spectrum so that we have a benchmark that will allow us to see how well this WST performs compared to the standard statistics. And according to the Gaussian assumption of, of the likelihood, which is a very common assumption, in addition to, the, to a prediction from the data that I showed previously, one of course needs to have a, a particular a theory model that can uh, uh, give us the dependence of the, of the target estimator as a function of the cosmological parameters of interest. And this is where simulations uh, came to the rescue for our model, where in particular uh, we uh, utilized the particular suite of the state-of-the-art Abacus Summit simulations which uh, have been uh, obtained, uh, designed by here our friends at the Center for Astrophysics at Harvard, in particular Daniel Eisenstein's group. And I don't want to get into all the details of the simulations, but this is, I just want to say that uh, they allowed us to construct realistic galaxy mocks that resemble the clustering of the Bosimas data set as a function of the cosmological parameters of interest. And uh, for example, you may see here on this plot on the left, those WST coefficients up to a given order as obtained by the BOSIMAS data set and also by an instance of uh, this Abaco summit simulations for the Planck like cosmology, and where you may see very good agreement. Now, combining uh, our theory model with a prediction from the data, we were able to perform likelihood analysis, the results of which you may see here plotted on this plot on the left, where I show the marginalized two-dimensional pos uh, posteriors obtained for three uh, cosmological parameters uh, of interest, NS, sigma-8, and the Hubble constant, uh, but as obtained by the WST in the blue contours and the standard power spectrum multiples in the red contours. So by looking into this plot, first of all, one might see immediately that uh, the mean values obtained for those parameters uh, uh, by the WST and the power spectrum are broadly speaking consistent with each other within one sigma of the power spectrum, which is very important and very encouraging because it essentially confirms that this novel estimator can recover a sensible cosmology. But more importantly than that, and as you might uh, be able to see very easily even visually, 
This WST uh, allowed uh, the determination of cosmological parameters with errors that are much, much tighter than the ones obtained by the traditional power spectrum. For example, allowing for the Hubble constant, a parameter of great interest, a determination uh, with accuracy within uh, with a sub percent level of accuracy. And the results for all parameters uh, with regards to the mean and the one sigma can be are tabulated uh, on this table for all the different runs we perform. And even though I do not have enough time to get into all the details of the likelihood analysis, I'd like to emphasize on the, uh, how exciting these results were and uh, 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 how they demonstrate the great promise held in the use of this um, uh, estimator in future applications of cosmological parameter inference uh, in the context of precision cosmology. And having said all of that, because I'm running out of time, I would like to summarize here. I presented the wavelet scattering transform, a novel statistic that promises to efficiently extract non-Gaussian information from physical fields and to serve as an ideal middle ground between convolutional and neural networks and traditional estimators. And I further presented the very first application of this wavelet scattering transform on density fields extracted by actual galaxy data, in particular by the spectroscopic BOSS CMAS uh, galaxy sample, and uh, an analysis of which showed that this WST can deliver one sigma errors on the determination of cosmological parameters that were much tighter than the ones obtained by the traditional uh, power spectrum multiples that one works with. And uh, I'm, I'm very excited about these results, but there's also many layers of improvements one can apply on our analysis. In particular, uh, the theory model we constructed uh, it relied on a linear Taylor expansion approximation of the cosmological dependence of our data vector. So I'd like to emphasize on this, that all of, the, all of these results that I showed above uh, relied on this approximation. But now, in collaboration with other members of the Abacus Summit, we are using this suite of state-of-the-art simulations to construct a full emulator for the precise cosmological dependence of the, of the WST coefficients, which will allow us to repeat this analysis with much greater degrees of accuracy. And I'm very excited about what this improved analysis is going to demonstrate about the promise of this estimator. And lastly, even though there is a wide range of physical applications one can perform with the WST, I would like to emphasize on the fact that uh, there's nothing that restricts this application on your boss data, since this procedure we detailed is very flexible and can be easily generalized. So as we are refining this model, one can very easily apply the wavelet scattering transform on upcoming data by the DESI survey and others. So I'm very excited about all of that and I hope to be able to present these results in the near future. Thank you all for being here, and I'm looking forward to the discussions. Thank you.